Several arrests made in Lexington after beer stolen from Kroger was found being sold off the shelves of various Lexington convenience stores. And we are going to track some frost this weekend, starting with tonight, early on Saturday morning, and a good hard freeze. It's a safe bet for Sunday. We'll track it all. Coming up. And the Big Blue Nation has started to invade downtown Lexington, heading to Rupp Arena to get their first look at this year's cats. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 4. Welcome to WKYT News at 4. The coldest air of the fall season is invading the bluegrass state overnight. Take a look. This is a live picture now of downtown Lexington. Temperatures are going to be taking a nosedive this weekend, bringing some gusty winds to the area. We want to check in first with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. Hi, Jim. Hello to you, Amber. And we are going to track quite the chill through the air as we head into the rest of the evening and especially overnight tonight and that weekend. It's going to be tough. We look to the outside here, across the road from the station and out toward the, the Hamburg area. And just like what they're seeing downtown, few clouds here and there. That's really about it. Just a beautiful day. Problem is, it's a chilly day. What we have for you tonight is a frost advisory that uh, goes into effect during the overnight and through the early morning. That's the first part of this. You go into Sunday morning and we go into the full blown freeze watch, which will eventually be a freeze warning as we get into your Saturday. So that suggests temperatures will be hovering in the upper 20s, low 30s. And I think that's exactly where we'll be. It is a football Friday night and it's going to be a chilly football Friday night. I think as we head out uh, for the high school games, what will be going on here around um, 54, mostly clear kickoff, 40s into the second half. That is the chill that builds into the area. It won't last forever, but it's going to be with us through the weekend, Amber. I'll track all of it coming up for you. All right, Jim, thank you. Kentucky State Police raided some Lexington convenience stores today and arrested three people after finding beer and women's cosmetics that had been stolen from Kroger and then later sold at the stores. KSB tells us workers at the Florence Avenue Market and Good Friends Food Mart on Paris Pike were reselling the stolen items. Hillary Thornton has all the details. It's our top story at four. Kentucky State Police say information from people caught shoplifting at Kroger led them to those items being sold at various Lexington convenience stores, including this one here on Paris Pike. Friday's raids happened at two different locations, one at the Florence Food Mart that resulted in the recovery of women's cosmetics and the arrest of 48-year-old Mafid Ayad. The second raid happening at Nichols Food Mart on Paris Pike, where several cases of stolen Budweiser were recovered, and the owner, Nikel Ildemar, and manager, Jao Batista Da Silva, both taken to jail. State police say the three people arrested in the raids are all charged with engaging in organized crime. Troopers say in some cases, items were being bought for pennies on the dollar. Upon interviewing, those shoplifters, they advised us that they were selling their product to stores throughout the region. Uh, and the store owners were aware that they were selling the stolen product because they would actually place orders. Troopers say investigations like this with Kroger into these crime rings are going on throughout the entire state. In Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. The man arrested at the Florence Avenue business was also charged with possession of a handgun by a convicted felon. Wildcat fans waited all year for it, and tonight it is finally here. UK's annual Big Blue Madness begins tonight at 7. Fans will get their first chance to see both the men's and women's basketball teams in action. Uh, Rob Bromley is live for us at Rupp Arena with all the details. Hi, Rob. Well, I tell you, uh, Rupp Arena will be alive tonight, and it is alive and noisy right now as they are rehearsing a lot of what they're going to do later on this evening. But it is a night that the fans look forward to every year. Big Blue Madness, a Kentucky tradition, and it is tonight here in Rupp. Now, John Calipari has some tremendous young talent that the fans are eager to see. Sunday, Cal opened his practice to NBA scouts. They like what they saw, and they were surprised by freshman Charles Matthews. They were surprised by Charles because everybody had kind of said Charles was an afterthought. When they watched him, they're like, wow. Um, they, uh, they were not surprised that Tyler did what he did. Um, obviously, they all like Scal. They all like Jamal. Um, but they're, again, each one of them, they went through what they saw they needed to go with. 
And, and understand, what we do gives us a base and each individual player a base of where they got to go. So it is madness tonight, and we will preview it on Before the Madness. That will begin at 5.30. It'll be on the CW Lexington, and then Big Blue Madness on national TV, 7 to 9 o'clock tonight on the SEC Network. And I will have much more coming up from here in Rupp Arena at 5 o'clock. And, of course, we'll be looking back on uh, last night's football game, frustration against the Auburn Tigers as the Cats fell 30 to 27. We'll have uh, a lot more on that, but for now, that's it from uh, here in Rupp Arena. Amber, back to you. Rob, thank you. A new app has been unveiled to help people going to games, concerts, or other events at Rupp Arena. Our news partners at the Herald Leader say the Rupp Arena app has been available now for months, but it was officially unveiled yesterday. The app allows users to look up directions to the arena, see a list of upcoming shows, and even purchase tickets. The app will also connect users to dozens of businesses located near Rupp Arena. We're working on a number of other stories for you on WKYT starting at 4.30. Sam joins us now from the newsroom to look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Sam. Good afternoon, Amber. Today, one of the twins charged with sexually abusing young children in the 1970s was sentenced to 20 years in prison. 77-year-old Jack Cassidy pled guilty in August to nine counts of various sex crimes involving six different victims from 1970 to 1976 when he was a Boy Scout troop leader. Prosecutors had recommended a 34-year prison sentence, but there's a statutory sentencing of 20 years. Lexington police arrested Jack Cassidy and his twin brother Jerry last year. We'll have more details from the sentencing ahead on WKYT News at 5 o'clock. A suspended police officer in Nelson County could lose his job. Bardstown's mayor and city attorney are considering testimony from an administrative hearing yesterday to make their decision. Bardstown officer Nick Halk was suspended last month. His brother is the longtime boyfriend of a woman who has been missing since July. Crystal Rogers was last seen at her boyfriend's farm in Nelson County. Police will not say if Houck's suspension has anything to do with Rogers' disappearance. No one has been arrested yet in that case. We'll have more details from the hearing coming up on WKYT News at 6 o'clock. 49 men and women became U.S. citizens this morning in Kentucky. The naturalization ceremony took place at the old state capitol in Frankfurt. The crowd included dozens of family members, friends, and even some elementary school children who came out to watch the process. The Kentucky State Police Honor Guard started the ceremony, and a Boy Scout troop from Lawrenceburg led the Pledge of Allegiance. Judge Gregory Tatenhove oversaw the proceedings, and all 49 new citizens swore their allegiance to America. We'll take you to the ceremony coming up on WKYT News at 5 o'clock. And that's a quick look at some of the news in progress. Amber, back to you. Sam, thank you. Now to some stories making headlines across the world at four. Tensions flared again this morning between Israelis and Palestinians. First a bombing, then a stabbing. Jonathan Vigilotti has the latest from Bethlehem. Israeli soldiers fired tear gas to push back crowds of Palestinian protesters in Bethlehem. Troops are making a show of force in a region on edge after a string of stabbing attacks targeting Jews. You feel that you are living in, in a war. It's not a normal uh, way of living. Israel's military says a Palestinian posing as a news cameraman stabbed a soldier in the West Bank town of Nablus this morning. Forces shot and killed the attacker and say the soldier will recover. Hours earlier, Palestinians threw firebombs at the site some believe is the sacred tomb of Joseph. The Hamas militant group called for a day of rage following Muslim prayers, and Palestinians have taken to the streets of Bethlehem in full force. We won't leave. We won't leave here. Palestine for us, not for him. Israeli police barred men under 40 from praying at Jerusalem's Al Aqsa Mosque this morning. Hundreds of worshipers laid prayer mats in the streets instead. The sacred site has been at the heart of recent violence after speculation Israeli officials wanted to limit access to Palestinians. It's a stupid occupation. How could you, how could you touch a sensitive uh, area like this? It means so much to the Muslims and the Arabs. Leaders on both sides say they're trying to calm tensions in the region. But so far, it's not working. Jonathan Vigliotti, CBS News, Bethlehem. In the past month, eight Israelis were killed in Palestinian attacks, most of them stabbings. At least 33 Palestinians have died from Israeli fire. Slight gains across the board on Wall Street this afternoon. The Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P 500 all up a fraction of a point. 
Today, U.S. Airways Flight 1939 is scheduled to depart Philadelphia for San Francisco for the very last time. U.S. Airways is being phased out as part of a 2013 merger with American Airlines. The carrier ends its tenure with almost 6,700 daily flights, more than 100,000 employees, and about 8% of U.S. domestic passengers. U.S. Airways started out 76 years ago. McDonald's now serves breakfast all day long, but it turns out some franchise owners are not loving it. Hannah Daniels explains why. From egg McMuffins to pancakes, breakfast items at McDonald's are no longer just for breakfast. Now you're free to start enjoying the breakfast you love anytime you wish. No way. Yes way. The fast food giant recently introduced all day breakfast. Lori Cabral is a fan. She was able to get hash browns and yogurt at 6 p.m. That's like my favorite part of their menu, so I'm very happy. Customers may be enjoying all day breakfast, but it seems not all the people who work inside are loving it. The finance company Nomura surveyed 29 franchisees who run more than 200 McDonald's locations. Some think the new plan is working. But many complain the added items are slowing them down. Erratic, distorted, disorganized direction from McDonald's, one franchisee wrote. Having a negative impact on service, another said. And all day breakfast is expensive and difficult to execute. But the McDonald's Corporation is defending its decision. In a statement, the company tells CBS News, we're hearing from customers and the overwhelming majority of our 3,100 franchisees that all day breakfast is a hit. Cabral agrees. It's great. It's great. In the survey, even frustrated franchisees admitted customers want it, which means all day breakfast is likely here to stay. Hannah Daniels for CBS News New York. The survey also showed that franchisees expect some store sales to increase slightly because of all day breakfast. Binge drinking cost the U.S. economy $249 billion in 2010. About a third of that came from lost productivity in the workplace by employees nursing a hangover. The numbers are the result of a study released by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The study defined binge drinking as consuming at least five drinks for men and four for women over the course of two hours. The head of the CDC's alcohol program says there are effective strategies to reduce excessive drinking and its related costs, but the programs are underused. Excessive drinking is blamed for 88,000 deaths each year. Well, a couple of things. Outbound Tate's Creek Road just before the Lansdowne shops looks like maybe a three-car collision. It's not injury, so getting past it over to the left seems to be working. Outbound alumni uh, from Tate's Creek to the circle looks pretty good. It starts getting slow in about Yellowstone, six to seven minute delay through there so far. And there's a Todd's Road winding project around Hayes Boulevard. Don't forget about that if you have to pass through there later. Now back to you in the studio. Officer Don, thanks so much. It is a party for the pumpkins, a fun time to celebrate fall here in the bluegrass. Our Deanne Stevens is out and about today. She joins us from the Arboretum with more. Hey, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. We are here at the Arboretum where everything is always so beautiful. They've got it decorated, ready to welcome you into a big party tomorrow. It's party for the pumpkins. Look at all these beautiful pumpkins that may even come to life for you and the kiddos tomorrow. Emma Trester Wilson is with us, a children's educator here at uh, the Arboretum. And Emma, you guys always do so many fun activities for the family. You're the cutest little pumpkin, too, Thank might you. I? Tomorrow you can take a picture with um, Miss Pumpkin here. You'll see our big pumpkins. We have a straw maze that you can go through. We'll have all kinds of fun events for children and their families tomorrow from 2 to 6. We also, this is a fundraiser for educational programming at the Arboretum. So we'll also have um, a silent auction with lots of cool things uh, that you can bid on that closes at five o'clock we are just going to have so much fun you guys do a lot of great activities for families as we mentioned and the kiddos but they're also wonderful learning tools that you do for them like tomorrow right right yeah we are focusing on fall and all of the seasonal changes so you'll have all kinds of crafts about 
fall and leaves and why the seasons are changing and the days are getting shorter and the leaves are changing colors. It's just going to be so much fun. And you can come out here and see how beautiful everything is. There's also, like, what is this straw maze? Is that what that yes, is? Yes, yeah. Our horticulturist, Jesse Dahl, created his, this straw maze for children and their families to go through. And we'll take you through the maze. Hopefully, we'll make it out. Uh, we'll do that at about 4 50. So, 2 to 6 o'clock tomorrow here at the Arboretum. $5 a ticket. You can get them. You can just show up here, bring the whole family out, and be a part, be a part of the party for the pumpkins. I'm Deanne Stevens, and I'm going to say it before you do. Yes, we planned our outfits together. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you guys. It is time now for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. The Federal Trade Commission has sided with soda giants Coca-Cola and Pepsi on the use of the word diet. Consumer rights groups called the word deceptive, false, and misleading and urged the FTC to ban it. The group cited several studies that support its claim diet drinks can lead to weight gain. U.S. Right to Know's co-director called the FTC's action regrettable. The FDA said in September it's reviewing the group's request. There is a new push to limit the amount of meat people eat from animals given antibiotics. California researchers say overuse of antibiotics in animal agriculture is linked to antibiotic resistance in people. Nearly 80% of the antibiotics sold in the U.S. are for agriculture use, and many are the same class of drugs used to treat adults. Many families have picky eaters, but a small number of them are extremely picky eaters. Doctors say it's not just about eating something new, it has real health implications. Holly Furfer explains. Do you like these? No. Do you like rice cakes? Yes. Okay. For like Kara and Louis Amo, getting their six-year-old son popcorn? Trey to eat a snack seemed yeah. more like a game of 20 questions. That's when we started to hear that he'll grow out of it. A large percentage of kids go through this um, and, and then they grow out of it. Toddlers are picky. They're busy. They're not going to starve themselves. Um, you know, that, that was the advice we were getting. And for some parents of picky eaters, the just wait advice is good advice. But Trey's case was different. This type of very limited eating put Trey in a group known as severely selective eaters. Only about 3% of kids are this selective when it comes to food. This is not a control battle. These kids gag when they taste new foods. They have a genuine disgust reaction. According to the new Duke study, severely selective eaters are twice as likely as other children to develop emotional problems like depression or anxiety over time. It's just something that we can kind of have in our back pocket and um, you know, something that we can just be aware of over time. For today's Health Minute, I'm Holly Furfer.